heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing. To the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Revelation 5 verse 13. be seated. I want to welcome you this morning on this Palm Sunday. We're at the beginning of Holy Week, and we start with celebration, the coming of Jesus, the coming of the King to the Holy City, and then we have the low point. And we'll be meeting on Good Friday this week, and we'll have a service to remember the supreme sacrifice that was made for you and made for me. And then next week, a week from today, we celebrate the highest point of all, the resurrection, the power that overcame death itself. 
So it's good to, to welcome you this morning. It's good to welcome folks that are joining us online. This is an exciting time, an exciting week to celebrate the very core of what it means to belong to Jesus Christ, to be saved by him. Will you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, thank you for this time together. We ask that you would bless it, that we would be open to all that you have for us. May you be glorified in our time of celebration, our time of praise, our time of coming together, and may we leave this worship time knowing that we have been in the house of our God, renewed, refreshed, redirected, filled with the Holy Spirit and the power of the resurrection that overcomes. For this we pray in Jesus' name, amen. All right, if the kids want to gather over here, I think we got something special planned today. Can I get a thumbs up if you're excited to celebrate Jesus today? All right. Okay, this morning, I would like all of you to help me with something. I need you to close your eyes. And if you don't have a palm branch in your hand already, I want you to put your hand out, okay? So close your eyes and put your hand out. And we're going to have a little talk. And while we're having this talk, we're going to put something in your hand, okay? All right, can you imagine the biggest parade ever? Think about the biggest parade ever. But in this parade, someone so special is going to be entering. And his name is Jesus. And the people of Jerusalem were going to celebrate him entering into Jerusalem on his donkey. And so they were going to shout Hosanna as he entered in because they were so happy to greet him. And so today, you guys get to be a part of your own parade. You guys are going to get to walk around and wave your palm branches, and we're going to pretend like Jesus is right here with us, but we don't even have to pretend because we know that he's right here with us. So we're going to shout Hosanna together, and we are going to praise Jesus' name this morning. All right, friends, if you would... Um, Get ready to stand up if you have your palms and your hands. And then we're going to get ready for a palm parade. Why don't we all remain seated for this song so we can see the kids.
Connection Central by the Shiloh Cafe for a gift from your friends at Shiloh. The next New and Perspective Members Luncheon is April 23rd, immediately following service. There will be no men's breakfast during the month of April. Instead, April's event will be the trip to Midwest Mission on April 15th. The next Ladies Lunch Bunch will be April 11th at 11.30 at Eckert's. This month's lunch will be on a Tuesday. This year's Holy Week services are our Good Friday service on Friday, April 7th at 6.15 p.m. and Easter Sunday on April 9th at 9 a.m. Child care will be available for both services and this month's communion will be part of our Good Friday service. Welcome home Shiloh. Just a couple quick additions to the announcements. We do have little cards back by the door that invite folks to Easter. This is a time that your neighbors and your coworkers and people uh, that you maybe go to school with or whatever would be open to coming and learning a little bit about what it means to belong to Jesus. So pick up a card and pass it on to somebody. Also want to let you know that following the service on April 16th, the week after Easter, we'll have a town hall meeting. Uh, these are opportunities to ask questions, to learn about things that are going on in the life of the church. And we want you to be aware of that after worship on April 16th. And you'll hear more as we get a little closer. Will you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, we do thank you that you are a God who hears our prayers that your love for us never fails and that you have shown it supremely through Jesus Christ our Lord who went to the cross that we might have life. Father, as we come together, we come together with struggles and concerns and things that we want to bring to your throne. We pray for those that are grieving and those in loss and pray that you would be there for comfort and hope and that reminder that you have overcome the grave. Father, be with those that are struggling with physical ailments of one type or another, whether it's surgeries or recoveries or whatever the situation is. We pray that you would be the great physician, that you would guide those that minister to the sick, Lord. Father, we pray for those struggling financially, those that are making big decisions and need wisdom, Lord, those that are dealing with strained or broken relationships in their families, Lord, among their friends. 
Father, we know that all of us sin at times and we fall short of your calling and we do things that hurt ourselves and hurt others in the process. And we pray for your grace and your forgiveness. We pray for that power that breaks free from the control of sin and addiction. We pray for that power that overcomes the struggles and brings victory to us. Help us as individuals and as a church to live out your calling to share the hope that comes in Christ with those that need to have that light in their life, to minister to those that are hurting in the name of Christ and with his approach, Lord, to love one another with that special kind of fellowship and community that forgives and understands and supports, that bears one another's burdens, even as we seek to bear our own. Father, help us to worship you in spirit and in truth and be more like Christ every single day as your Holy Spirit works within us. Help us to be good stewards of all that you've given us, to bless as we have been blessed, to be the kind of people that are giving and caring and generous. And Father, we lift up your church throughout the world. We pray that you would be at work in mighty ways as this Easter, this Holy Week is celebrated. We pray for our own communities. We pray for our military men and women that you would be with them and bless them, especially those that are far from home. We pray for our children, for our schools and our businesses and our institutions and our leaders at all different levels. We pray that you would be at work at mighty ways in Shiloh, in this area, in our state, in our nation, in our world. And we want to never forget to thank you and to praise you and to honor you, not only for how you have blessed us, but how you've blessed all your people and for who you are. A God who is powerful, holy, loving, and comes close to us in the Lord Jesus. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. We're going to continue in a spirit of prayer, and we invite you, if you'd like to pray with me, just give me a wave or a nod or a wave for me to know, and I'll come to you. Or if you would like to pray with one of our Stephen ministers, they're going to be stationed around, um, and they will be available for you to pray privately with them as we continue, and our worship team leads us in a song. Even the hairs of your head are all counted. Matthew 10, verse 30.
Jesus, for this time in your presence. Amen. You know, this is a time that we remember our tithes and our offerings, the way we support the ministries of our church and the work in people's lives. Uh, our giving is pretty much online, and you can text, you can go to our website, you can have uh, lots of different ways to do that, but we also have a box over there. If you'd like to place an envelope in there, you're welcome to do so. Will you pray with me, please? Dear God, we thank you for the opportunity to be co-workers in the ministry, and we ask you especially to bless this children's event today, that it would be a special time to draw people closer to you to celebrate the coming of Jesus, Lord. Bless our tithes and our offerings. May they go to the building up of your kingdom and to your glory. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Psalm 24, verse 10. Is the King of glory that pursues me with his love and haunts me with each hearing of his softly spoken words my conscience a reminder of forgiveness that I need who is the king of glory offered it to me Who is the king of angels the blessed prince of peace revealing things of heaven and all his mysteries the spirit seven longing grace in which to stand who is this king of glory son of god and son of little Oklahoma town that I don't know if it ever reached 13, 1400 in population. It's gone down since then. It was called Fairfax and we had to go 30 miles to get to the closest movie, the closest theater at a time when you had three channels on the television, if it came in on any of those three channels. But I remember one day, when I was like nine or 10 years old, word spread of a big event happening in downtown Fairfax. 
And I gathered with all the other kids my age and older and younger, and we were rushing downtown, and here they came, down the middle of Main Street in Fairfax. They had the giant walking next to the midget. They had clowns on little tricycle things and little motorized bikes. They had acrobats doing flips. Here came riders on horses, and folks, I am not making this up. An elephant came walking down the middle of Fairfax, Oklahoma. And they handed out flyers as they went. The circus was in town. They crossed the bridge over Salt Creek and went down to the open place by the baseball diamonds. And they used the elephant to help set up the big tent. We followed them down there, of course, and watched the whole thing. And then we went home with that flyer and said, can we go, 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 can we go? And some of us broke into our piggy banks and got into our newspaper delivering money, and we went more than once to see the circus in Fairfax. And a few days later, they packed up and left, and everything went back to boring normal. The circus was gone. The excitement was gone. Please look with me in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 and following, and stand as you're able in honor of the reading of the Gospel. Matthew 21, 1 through 16. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them. And he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did and the children shouting in the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. Do you hear what these children are saying, they ask him? Yes, replied Jesus. Have you never read from the lips of children and infants, you, Lord, have called forth your praise? This is the word of God for the people of God. Please be seated. It was a day of excitement in Jerusalem. Jesus is coming. The Galilean prophet, the healer, the miracle worker, the one that the rumors have been spreading about for weeks and months and probably even years. Jesus is coming and people line the streets to see him for the first time and to welcome him. They lay down their coats on the road for the donkey he's riding on to step on. They cut branches from the trees. They shout the Old Testament pilgrimage songs. Praise God. Imagine the excitement of what's going on. It's Passover time, folks. One of the three times a year that you are supposed to go as a male Jew to Jerusalem to celebrate the festival. Of course, they don't know for sure, but the estimate is that maybe Jerusalem had a population of 25,000, maybe 50,000 in those days. And at Passover, there were maybe 100,000, maybe even 200,000 pilgrims that came. The place was packed out. The excitement was tangible. This is the celebration of God's deliverance of the people of Israel from slavery and bondage. The expectations were high. 
The hopes were fantastic. Would Jesus be the new Israelite king? Would he be the Messiah come to deliver them? A better deliverance than Moses had done in Egypt? Would he come to defeat their enemies, to kick out the Romans? Was there a chance that all their lives would change? You can imagine the excitement that is pulsating through the crowd, the excitement among these pilgrims. Would this army of pilgrims become the army of the Messiah? Jesus, the one who is to come. I bet there was many a nervous Roman soldier in Jerusalem that week. I bet there wasn't a whole lot of sleep that was happening at the Praetorian Guard as all this tension was building in the midst of them. A crowd ready to declare Jesus Lord and King, to put an end to fear and fighting, to claim all those Old Testament promises of everything being great, of the nations pouring to Jerusalem, of the Messiah ruling over, of even the lion lying down with the lamb, and both of them getting a good night's sleep. But it was all a misunderstanding. It was all a mistake. The crowd failed to see the symbolism that Jesus carefully enacted in his entry into Jerusalem. He was not coming as a conqueror on a charger, a war horse, prepared and stomping and snorting. When Pompey in 63 BC entered Jerusalem, he did so on a white war horse with legions marching behind him. A typical display of the power of Rome. And he went into Jerusalem and he redid all the different government aspects of that whole area. You get this as king and you get this as high priest and so forth. Jesus came riding in on a donkey. On a donkey. You don't go to war on a donkey. You know, when I was over in the Middle East as a student, I saw people riding these donkeys, and they're almost as wide as they are tall. And a grown man, their feet almost dragged the ground. They would drag the ground, except that donkey's so wide, your feet kind of splay out like that. It's humorous looking to see people riding on these little short donkeys. Jesus is saying something about that verse that says, here comes your king, humble. He's enacting a humility that they don't catch there. He's the king who comes to serve, to help, not to be served. For the Son of Man came not to serve, but to serve, or not to be served, but to serve others. He's the, count, the king that comes, that welcomes the lepers and heals them, that welcomes the sick and takes care of them that welcomes the sinners, the outcasts, the tax collectors, and yes, even the prostitutes. It says more of the nature of the king than they realize. It's peaceful. It's coming as one who is not coming to kill, but one who's coming to die. One who's coming to lay down his life. Not to conquer humans, but to conquer death, to overcome the greatest enemy that humans had, an enemy much greater than the power of Rome was to the Jewish people of that day. Even the crowd's words say more than they realize. We often take that word Hosanna along the lines of hallelujah, right? It's one of those Hebrew words that we sing when we're all excited and, and, and we're making a statement. Hallelujah, Hosanna, praise be to God. Well, look with me at Psalm 118, 21 to 27 that has this prophecy. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession, or festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. 
Psalm 118, 21 to 27 is the source, as you could tell, of several prophecies that are enacted that first day of Palm Sunday, that time when Jesus comes to town. And you might be wondering, where's the Hosanna in that? It's in verse 25 when it says, Lord, save us. That's Hosanna in Hebrew. Lord, save us. It's not like hallelujah, praise be to God. It's a cry for help, a cry for salvation. I picked up my kids from the daycare, October 17th, 1994. Put my son on the far side, which I usually don't do. He wasn't quite three yet. Put my daughter in the front seat with her seat belt on. He was in his little car seat. And we were driving home in this beautiful October Evening, it was like 4.30, 5 o'clock. It wasn't dark. Light was out. Everything was going fine. And as we were coming around the curve, going about 50 miles an hour, a guy swerves over at the last minute and slams into us head on. Completely spun the car around. I came to with my glasses gone, with blood in my eyes, steering wheel pinned both my arms and it crushed them. The engine came back and crushed my legs. And both of my kids are screaming their heads off. I had no idea how hurt they were. I had no idea what I could do. And so I did the one thing that I could do in a position like that. I said, Lord, help us. Lord, help us. And I passed out. Next thing I knew, I was at the hospital and I was being told that the kids were just fine. My daughter didn't have a bruise or a cut on her, although they put, picked glass out of her hair. And my son had a bruise from the car seat and the impact was all. See, that's what Hosanna means. That's when you use that term, when you got no other hope. You say, Lord, help us. When you can't do anything to help yourself, when you only only can cry out, Lord, help me with this pain. Lord, help me in this situation. Lord, help me because I'm facing death. Lord, help me. That's what they were crying, and that's what he came to do. He came to save it's exactly what Jesus came to do, not to conquer, but to save. And the crowd on Palm Sunday was disappointed and they didn't do what they expected. They expected a ruler and they got a crucified savior. They expected a conquering king and they got a humble Messiah riding on a donkey. Oh, they got a chance to take out their frustration a few days later, crying out, give us Barabbas, crucify him. Again, in ignorance and not realizing what they were doing. And then they went back to their ordinary lives. Then they went back to the old humdrum of the life that ends in death. Unless, unless they were one of those, those thousands that over the few months ahead would hear the proclamation that Jesus was not dead that he was alive again, that his spirit was at work through his disciples, that he was bringing salvation and a different future. And those that gave their heart to him, it was not back to ordinary anymore. Those that claimed the salvation that he brought were transformed into fearless witnesses for him that would turn the Roman Empire, the world of that day, upside down. Most missed it when the king came. The children got the message better than the adults did. The children said more than the adults understood that the one who can save was there and that he came for them. Not as the conquering hero, but as the Passover lamb that dies that its blood might give life, that is sacrificed that it might bring salvation. 
The king that came to die on the cross brought salvation. Have you recognized his coming in your life? Have you opened yourself to what he has for you? Have you experienced an answer to that cry of desperation, whatever the circumstances? Lord, save us. Lord, deliver us. Do you know him as Savior and as Lord? You can because he's alive today. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The stone is rejected and God has made him the cornerstone. The one who was missed and God has shown that he's the one that was long expected. The one who came to lay down his life that we might have life through him. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your incredible love for us and all the ways you show it, most of all through Jesus Christ our Lord. We thank you that you sent him. We thank you that he was willing to come. We thank you that you offer us this incredible grace, this incredible salvation. Lord, give us the strength, the wisdom, the desire, and the ability to respond. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to remind you that this is our usual communion Sunday, but we decided this year that we're not going to do communion today. We're going to focus on Good Friday. Uh, we'll start with communion and we'll kind of have that, that whole build up, uh, and then we will focus on the, the cross as well. But I also want to remind you that this is the opportunity to respond to God's call in your life. This is the opportunity, if God has been working on you to bring you to a decision, to have something change in your life, this is the opportunity to recommit. This is the opportunity to go deeper. This is the opportunity to receive everything that he has for you. Will you stand and will you sing with me? And I will thank you forever because of what you have done. In the presence of the faithful, I will proclaim your name for it is good. Psalm 52, verse 9. <clears throat> For all that I've done, I will thank you. For all that you're going to do. For all that you've promised and all that you are is all that has carried me.
it's good to worship with you today. I just want you to look back at that clock. It's 10 minutes till. They didn't think I could keep it short for the event. Uh, I just, just wanted you to know, make that point. For all those Sundays, I went too long, all right? Yeah. <laughs> We, we, we're going to have a little bit of setup time beforehand. Uh, we'd love to have you guys help if you would like to. There'll be some folks smarter than me that will give you directions and such. Uh, and then we've got our big event for the kids coming up in a little while. But let's have a word of benediction first. Dear God, we thank you for an opportunity to celebrate the coming of our Lord Jesus on that first Palm Sunday, Lord. And please help us to celebrate the coming of our Lord Jesus into every one of our hearts this holy week. To take the time that we need to to stop and reflect and to understand what you have done for us. Father, to celebrate the victory over death and how dearly it was bought. Thank you for this community. We ask your guidance, your blessing upon the event coming up. We ask your guidance and blessing for this week. Help us to serve you and glorify you and do it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for loving and sending me free.